Financial literacy lessons on your fingers. Strategic life lessons that enrich your livelihood. Follow our series of lessons to find out how financial intelligence can improve your life. What is a good life without a little bling? What is a good life without a comfortable home? We all want and deserve to have access to the good life. Financial literacy is important because it helps you with knowledge that you can base life-altering decisions on. Did you know that you can achieve so much more with the resources you have? But it all takes planning. To illustrate this, we will use examples of two people, Tatenda and Tawanda. They both graduated five years ago with book prizes from the same university. Landing a job was easy for Tatenda, but not as easy for Tawanda. Tatenda started as an intern and he managed to rise through the ranks in no time. Tawanda, on the other hand, struggled to secure a job and two years after college, he decided to start an informal retail business. Both got married in their third year after college. Tawanda's wife advised him to expand the business and sell more products. Couple A, Tatenda and Chipo, combined earn $1,750 per month, whilst Couple B, Tawanda and Lisa, earn between $800 and $1,200 net depending on the month. Both couples have adjusted their lifestyles to their profiles. Couple A lives in a middle-class suburb. Couple A lives a flashy, expensive life with pricey cars. They took a car loan, which they used to purchase a fancy SUV, with a monthly repayment fee of $150 and monthly fuel costs can get up to $100. As grounded family people, they support their respective families and siblings for $200. Lifestyle maintenance takes up to $200 of their income, leaving them with nothing until their next payday, which usually falls on the 28th of every month. Whereas couple B decided to continue staying at their parents' house whilst their business stabilizes. They are part of two Maround that help with groceries and cash. They're in a housing cooperative that is helping them secure a stand in Tinwald. This means they don't have rent on their expenses. They just pay for utilities at a cost of $50 per month. They use $100 for groceries as they live a modest life. They work seven days a week. Their motto is Tinojga Tashanda, meaning they understand their income comes direct from their business, so they have to go work for it daily. They can't afford to close the shop. They require $150 for family support. For siblings, they usually ask them to come to the shop for part-time work and reward them through a salary so they don't have to give handouts every month. Now let's take a moment. Who's got a better life, couple A, Tatenda and Chipo, or couple B, Tawanda and Lisa? Why? If the unexpected was to happen today, say couple A's contracts were to be terminated due to unforeseen changes, or couple B couldn't restock and run operations, who would be better off? Think about it. Food for thought. Can couple A not do better by opting for a reasonably priced apartment and they save towards a mortgage? Should couple A not consider downgrading on life maintenance costs and save? How safe and wise is it for couple B to just be keeping money under their mattress?